You need to find a cool space and use lights. That's the way to go. You know. And once they get to a certain size, then you'll be okay. But tr if you're trying to start stuff in a hot greenhouse and it's stuff that doesn't want to germinate at hot temperatures, I'll give you some tricks to break dormancy. You could take, make a little hoop house and put a couple layers of the white plastic over, you know, and keep the ground um, moist so you get some evaporative cooling too. And that probably would do it. You know, but you have to create a cool place. If you don't have a greenhouse yet and you want to start stuff this year. A set of lights will get you four flats going. Four flats for a home garden is a heck of a lot, you know. But if you're doing anything with electricity and plants and water, you be sure you have ground fault, ground fault outlets, you know. Um, it's nice to, you know, have a three-plong plug and all that, and that's kind of nice. But if you've got the ground fault, if there's something wrong, it's just going to throw it, and that's way better. Humidity is a huge boon for germination, and that's what that is. That is essentially a metal tub with a hot water heater element set in the tub and it's thermostatically controlled by what's called a remote bulb thermostat. And that means that it has a long metal conducting tube that goes to a, therm a, a, a thermocouple and the thermocouple senses the temperature and kicks on the, the, the heat, turns it on and off. That's how the thermostat is determined. That bulb doesn't sit in the water, it sits in the air, right? And we set it at 72 degrees, which hot water heater element has no trouble getting to, right? But it's trying to make the air temperature 72 degrees, which means it stays on and makes a shower effect forever, you know? And so you have that, you know, steamy shower effect all the time. As long as you got in some kind of sealed container, you know, that's gonna, relatively sealed. It could be like that, you know, I'm not a carpenter. I need a structure to hold the lights Here's my structure. Now that would also work great for a germination chamber. Set a table, a small table up, drape something over it, set your um, humidifier in there, and bam, you got, a, you got yourself a germination chamber. You know, you put this out on a sunny day, and forget that it's that it's also a greenhouse, and you cook your plants. You know, so you got to pay attention. You could put it out on a sunny day because you still want you want the plants to, that are up to get more light, but you you still have some that are germinating, so you want the lid on. Just put some row cover over it to reduce the gain. There'll still be plenty of light for the plants, but it won't overheat, you know? So, we actually use these mostly when we, for every season, we have to do a little mouse slaughter in the greenhouse. And we use this to keep the mice off it until we have baited them all out, you know? They unfortunately decide every winter that this is the best place in the world to be and that we're feeding them when we start our plants. So, but humidity is pretty critical for germination. And then, like I said, the thing I don't have written down here, but it also is critical, is finding a cool place in the summer and using lights, you know. Um, we will uh, talk more about that, though, when I get down to breaking heat and induced dormancy, because that's what you're experiencing there if you can't get things to start in the summer. Okay, materials. If you're buying potting soil in this area, it hands down beats any other potting soil by far. It's pricier, but I think it's worth every penny. You can see the quality of our seedlings here, right? Mm -hmm. They look pretty darn good. It's called Macanra. And it's available from Troy's Greenhouse, not yet, but it will be. I'm putting the order in on Monday. Um, fifth season. I'm going to try and get the food co-op, by the way, to carry a couple pallets. John Nielsen taught this company how to make it, and they now use his formula. And I happen to be, I happen to know him, so I help him to tweak it. So it's a formula that I've helped to tweak, but it's a product that's all over the country. You know, it's not, a, not my individual product. You know? Okay. Um, but I just, what I love most about it is if we look, back here for a moment. These guys here are desperate to go on the ground. You know, they're, uh, they're, they're compatriots, the ones that we put out, went in the ground six weeks ago. If this was in any other potting soil, these guys would not look, really, they're stressed now, and they need, you could see they're running out of nutrition, but they would not look anything like this. They would look terrible, you know? It's 40-some percent compost. John and I still say it's more than they need. But the fact that it is 40 some percent compost means that it just goes and goes. You know, if you, and that happens a lot with even home growers. You know, we have the best intentions are fine, but life gets in the way, you know. And so lots of times we don't get our plants out as soon as we'd like. And with this potting soil, it doesn't matter. You know, but you won't even notice that you're a week or two late, you know. And here we're probably, I don't know, four to six weeks late, and they still look fine. So you don't bother mixing your own pot you know, soil then, because you, you can... I used to all the time, and I I actually, up in Silo, have a, um, 
a compost bin system that I have soil on top of and I, as a biofilter so the gases from the compost don't hurt the plants. And I could grow directly in that, but I tend not to. Um, the same discussion as the onions, actually. You know? um, but I grow on top of it, and I get free heat, and it works really well. But I probably would never do it if, and I don't do it very much anymore because I divide the macro. But what made me do it was I also was making my compost for the next year's potting soil. You know? And I made it a point to ace my compost in the springtime so I got the heat for my seedlings, but also so that I, after it sat for a year, it was great compost for potting soil. And the last week's cl last class that we had here was on starting seeds, just the seed part, not growing the seedlings out. And that's the way we already did the germination chamber and the heat table and all that. This is potting soil made from my old recipe, which comes from Atra. Do people know about Atra? It's on your it's on your page here. It's applied technology in the resource section. Oh, yeah. Applied technology transfer to rural areas, and they have like. Used to be you'd send away for paper handouts, now you just look on the web, of course, you know. But they've got papers on everything, including a paper on potting soil. Soil is everything, right? And if you're making your own potting soil, you decide to, don't bother if you don't have good compost. You know? And frankly, I have no use for potting soils that don't have good compost at all. And the reason <laughs> is, then you have all kinds of disease problems in a greenhouse, you know? It's real easy to have disease problems if you don't have compost. If you got compost, you got the beneficial life and I've never had much problem with diseases with my seedlings. You know? And yet I'm always being told all these terror horror stories and warnings about how you sterile you have to be and everything. It's like, no, get some good life there. You don't have to build it. <laughs> the world works pretty good when life is diverse and healthy. You know? So that's that's the direction I go in. Containers. I have started seedlings and you name it. I've started them, you know, tofu containers, <laughs> you know. Whatever I eat, I've started seedlings and egg, you know, little egg 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 cartons, they're terrible. They're just way too small. But you know, you can use any of them. And they're all fine, but they're really not. I, I think it's you do better if you just buy some some cell packs. You think like using plastic is fine to start the ceilings? If you use them over and over and over again, yeah. I think it's okay. What I was going to say about containers is, it kind of does matter for some plants and doesn't matter at all for others. You know, um, possibly the smallest cell I'd ever recommend using is something called a 288, and it's way too small to grow things out in. I'm going to bring a half because it's what's on top. But this is a half of one. You know? It's incredibly tiny. There's there's two, three ways I use this, right? The standard thing you use this for is you got your germination chamber. And also, I should, I'm going to go back to infrastructure because I have a, I, I'm going to show you what we did for a bottom heat. But I just realized I should tell you the other brilliant idea I just had for setting up bottom heat is I teach compost tea brewing. And I recently got by mistake, a submersible heater. So the entire heater can go in the water. If you had anything, even a kid's pool, or a kid's sled, anything you could put water in, you could lay that heater in there, set it to 72 degrees, put plastic over it, or use styrofoam and float in it, and you instantly have a very cheap, that cost about 20 some bucks to get that heater. And it'll heat like 60 gallons. You can make a big table. Just make sure you got some safe water holding unit, you know. And that kind of creativity for creating, because bottom heat is really good for getting plants going. And it's not hot. Don't get it wrong. It's not like you need to set that at 80 degrees and make it really crank. 70 degrees is all you need for any plant, you know. Even peppers and stuff. The difference between 70 and 80 is not great enough that you need to be wasting that energy. And indeed, other plants, if you're trying to start a mix of plants, they're going to do poorly if you got it, got it set at 80, you know. So 70, 72 degrees, this germination chamber set at 72 degrees, everything pops in it. Peppers will pop in a few days, you know. Even though you think, well, they take two weeks. With all that constant steam and steady temperature, four or five days and they're up, you know. So it works great that way. Anyways, back to containers. This here, I mostly use it when I'm going to try and fit a lot of heat-loving plants on a heat table, you know, because we're growing lots of plants and we can easily fill that up with peppers and tomatoes and eggplant and stuff. And if we try to do it in one twenty-eighths, we wouldn't have enough space, you know. So that's the main use for it. But I've learned that if I'm going to put them out reasonably quickly, onions start really well and contain really well in these. You know? And also, um, <laughs> Yana Fishman, my, um, my friend Yana Fishman, who's married to Doug Elliott, the naturalist, um, she still talks about how I changed her life when one time I gave her a flat of lettuce in this size thing. She said, Those, they'll never do anything. I said, stick them out. It's fall. They'll be happy as can be. They just can't wait to get in the ground. And she put them all out. It was it was like mixed lettuce and salad greens, and she had them all winter. You know, and it's just revelatory that those tiny little seedlings they you know 
a lot of the tougher things are fine in this if you're getting them out right at their peak. You know, they've, they've colonized it, but they're not root bound. If they sit in these, they're going to run out of steam really fast and be pretty useless. You know, the other way it wouldn't work is if you stuck those out in the spring when it was hot and sunny and windy, before they could get enough root area around, you know, spread enough out, they'd probably dry out on a hot day, you know. So they work, you know, it's like they have specific uses, you know. It's that, and that actually, I guarantee you, any extension agent hears me, hears me telling you to put plants from this right into the ground, you know, <laughs> completely over the top, you know. But I've done it, it works, you know, and there are times when it's really useful. Otherwise, size... Scott, Scott Paquin of uh, Firefly Farm is a musician. He swears someday he's going to have a band that's aimed at farmers. He's going to call it the 128s. Because 128 is the farmer's flat size, you know. It's like a lot of plants, but it's a decent sized cell. It's not nearly as big as a 72, you know. It's roughly a third smaller, but it's big enough. Almost any plant that's, that, not talking eggplant now, you know, are the plants that have to be baby before they go out. But almost any other plant, it's going to be fine, you know. It'll work great. Um, so 128 is a standard size. 72s are really what I recommend for home gardeners because the plants are going to be gorgeous in a 72. You know, they're going to do really well. And 72 plants is more than you'll ever need for most home gardens. And probably you won't even do a full flat of one thing. What's yeah. 72 there? 72. This is a 72 right here, yeah. yeah. And then there's 48, which are the bigger sixes, you know. And they're kind of like... You didn't like how your plants did last year, then you do a, you do a, a 48, you know, and they'll probably do a lot better. It's the bigger your plant, the better it's the, you know, if you get, let's say you get, always get nailed on your brassicas by flea beetles. Instead of doing a 128, you'd probably try a 72, and if you did really bad, you might go to a 48 the next year. Sooner or later, your plant's going to be big enough that it's going to get past the flea beetles before they nail you, you know. So that's why you make those decisions, you know, what, what size you're going to do. The other key place to watch out for it is tomato tomato family right i don't ever put a plant I, you can do it but i just find that they do way better i never put a 48 tomato pepper or eggplant out i always want them to at least be a 36 you know um which is a four pack and indeed for eggplant which are so bothered by flea beetles my goal is three or four inch pots and then the people who say that, you know, oh, the flea beetles will wipe them out. Nope. The plant's big enough, it just grows past them, you know. There's other tricks for that. You can use surround to keep the flea beetles off and stuff. But um, if, if all you have time for is to make sure you're putting them out from a four-inch pot, you're probably going to get eggplant. They're going to get past the flea beetles. You know, once they're a certain size, the flea beetles are still there, but the plant can shake them off, and they do fine. And cucumbers, I just get, I want a four-pack always. Never anything smaller than a four-pack. Because you want them large before yeah. you and put I, them and in. They're, they're a little different. Most everything else you expect them to be in the pot for five to six weeks. Cucurbits don't start until three weeks before they're going out. They're going to be too big for any pot. I don't care if you use a four inch pot. They're going to fill that up within three weeks to the point where they don't want it. They're going to be starting to get stunted if they go out. Well, so let's touch, talk for a minute about the benefits of starting rather than just putting that seed out okay. there then. I mean, you get a little bit of a jump on it, but at that point, you know, you're talking about three weeks. The, the, for cucurbits? Yeah. For cucurbits, the main reason that I like to start them in pots is soil preparation, having the time to have the soil ready to go. Sometimes I don't even have a place for them. I'm waiting for the, the uh, spring peas right, to get right, out, right. Yep. you know, and so they're going that way. Uh. If you've got the space and your space is pretty weed free and you, you're not really buried in, in cucumber beetles because you have good, good farmscaping, I'd say it's superior to your XC cucurbits, you know. I never do. And it's not because of cucumber beetles, it's always because of space, you know. Yeah, okay. Space and timing. That's a good point. You know, I may not have time to get all my hills ready for my squash, but it could be 9 o'clock at night after a long day when I'm thinking, oh, I want my squash out, and I can start a few flats, you know. So that's how it always ends up being, you know. Right? And you'll probably gain a week or something, too, on, on, yeah. by, put, by putting in the flat. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, I oftentimes gain way more because I'm oh, not going to get the space ready for three yeah. weeks, you know. Sure, so that's sure. the, you know. I tend to focus, my, I must confess, I'm a do what's in front of me, most important kind of person. And so I'm probably going to be doing other things I have to do on the farm and not preparing my cucurbit space. But when I look at those two and a half week old squash and know they're going to be crap at three and a half weeks, then I go, okay, have to prepare the cucurbit space, you know? So that's just how I do it. It's probably not the best way to grow, you know? But it suits what I do, you know? Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's pretty critical. 
that's the, the size of the pots. There are plants that, that really it doesn't matter, lettuce, I mean, you give it a big thing, it'll be prettier, well, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Even brassicas are pretty forgiving, but when you get to cucurbits and solanacea, and to be honest, onions too, if you're going to let them sit too long, they really have to have the reserves. They, they, the things that stunt, if they don't get, if they get stopped, you don't want that. Let that happen with you. Know? There are some things that stunt. Actually, broccoli stunts, but broccoli you can bring it right out of a stunt by giving it a whole bunch of nitrogen. You know, that's less the case with things like um, like cucurbits. They're going to be a certain point where they're going to go. You know what? I'm making a fruit right now, and then they'll eventually get past that and grow, but they'll never give you the potential. You know, they've just done it too soon, and they're just never going to come back. What about know? carrots and? Um Carrots, beets, the same thing. Beets, I would do at least in a 128. They'd probably be happier to be in a 72, but we want to start so many that we're going to do them in 128. So, you carrots, know. you can't. Carrots, we do not start them in the ground.